Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar Empowering Digital Transformation Using Local Gov Drupal. My name is Lucy Wakeford. I'm Director of Programmes at Digital Leaders, and it's my pleasure to be chairing this session. Before I introduce our presenters, I'd firstly like to recap the topic, just to give anyone who might be running late a chance to join. So we'll be discussing empowering digital transformation during using local web Drupal this morning uh, with our five panelists. I hope there are five of you. Uh, so first up, we have Layla Dewhurst, who, and Layla is in Views's user experience lead. As a passionate advocate for user research and accessibility best practice, Layla led Redcar's platform discovery and user experience project stages to optimize the complete Redcar and Cleveland user experience. We have Ryan Taylor, and Ryan is Invisa's project delivery lead and was pivotal in ensuring the project stayed on track against the defined project plan, allowing the project to be delivered on time and to budget. Ryan also ensured throughout the project clear communications were maintained with Redcar and Cleveland, assisting with a smooth delivery. Anthony Tyerman is a communications officer for Redcar and Cleveland Council, and he explores ways to improve the website and digital experience for the residents. He was the main point of contact throughout the project and ensured the design and development aligned with the transformation plan. We also have Mike King, and Mike has spent over 15 years working on Drupal projects, and was the lead project manager on the Redcar and Cleveland local gov Drupal project. He was instrumental in ensuring client needs were met and that the project came in on time and budget. And we have Mark Conroy and Mark is Anatex Director of Development, a Drupal core maintainer and the front end lead for local Gov Drupal platform. He's been involved with LGD since the beta phase, uh, rewriting and continuing to maintain the front end template system. And he's currently leading the front end stream of the LGD microsites project. And finally, we have Jamie Garrett, who will be our chair for this morning. And Jamie has worked closely with local government and Drupal for over 10 years, and he's passionate about accessibility and ensuring services for citizens are built with their needs at the forefront by removing any guesswork. So Jamie, over to you. Awesome, thank you, Lucy, um, and welcome everyone. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much. I'm gonna kind of just um, set the scene in terms of what um, LGD is, local gov Drupal, and I'll hand over to all of the, the professionals that have been on the ground doing all the actual, the actual work. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, so local gov Drupal is an open source publishing platform that's being created for councils by councils with end users at the core of everything they do. Currently, there are around 28 councils um, and their teams are driving innovation and digital transformation to ensure councils are able to offer quality and accessible service to all of their users. Um, for today's webinar, we're, we've obviously got um, AMP on the call um, and AMP works at Redcar and Cleveland Council and he is going to be sharing his story about around how he's worked with us to to launch their new LGD uh, website. So without further ado I'll hand over to AMP and he's going to give you a bit of an insight as to why Redcar and Cleveland, Cleveland had to change their website um, and then a little bit more background around the project. So AMP over to you. Morning everybody. Um, yeah so as James mentioned, I'm a communications officer for Redcar Cleveland Borough Council. Um, we've just launched a LGD based corporate website to much um, fanfare to our users and residents and our stakeholders. Um, I think the the project was kicked off mainly because of the um, the difficulties we had with our previous corporate website that was a, a SharePoint based um, website that was largely um, problematic for us with our, our content and the, the content delivery, the way that we, we put the site together um, and the ways that we could develop or the inflexibility that we had with being able to um, redevelop and um, improve our, our corporate website overall. Um, we initially had some wider organizational goals in relation to using SharePoint as a, a center point for all of our digital transformation, our digital strategy and our digital delivery. But as we move through the, the product's lifespan, the, the development of the product before launch and then the, the initial post launch period, uh, it became apparent quite quickly that it perhaps wasn't the best um, fit for us as an organization, particularly in helping us to redevelop our user experiences and, and deliver that high quality, really accessible and um, really feature rich experience that we wanted for, for residents to give them easier access to information and services um, as part of our overall digital transformation. Um, we 
as some of you may know, had a, um, a cyber attack in early 2020, just before the, the start of the COVID pandemic. And that further cemented our, um, our thinking around moving away from SharePoint as our corporate platform um, into something that was a lot more flexible, a lot more uh, user-friendly and a lot easier for us to manage and maintain um, technically, um, so that we weren't stuck with a heavy amount of technical debt or, or having to um, reach out to niche groups of developers and, and other um, industry professionals in order to help us support and develop what we had. Um, when the cyber attack took place, I was tasked by my service leads to have a look around at what other local authorities were doing, uh, what was available in the market, particularly with a look at open source products. We explored a number of local source products, um, open source products, sorry. Um, then we settled on LGD after a, um, we had an invite to a, um, an LGD product meeting from Will Callahan. Um, and we, we chatted to um, a number of the developers, a number of the local authorities that were part of that project at the time. Um, and it was quickly apparent that this was a, a very good fit for us in terms of um, what we had internally in terms of our resources for development, resources for content management, et cetera. And it, we, we started talking to um, it was Westminster Council, um, Brighton, um, and a couple of other councils that were already on board with the project. They explained what the project was, what the aims of the project was, um, and, and what they wanted to do with, with LGD and how they felt that the, the product could develop over time and how we could be um, a, you know, a part of, of that development. Um, Shortly after we decided that this was what we wanted, um, went out to procurement, got ourselves a, a partner in um, Anatech and Inviews, and away we went from there. Uh, and yeah, it, it's you know from first the first sort of observations of it all, we were extremely impressed with what was available straight out of the box. Um, and then you know as the product uh, the project developed, we were quickly um, quickly into uh, you know a, a workable product and something that we were really impressed with and. We launched two and a half weeks ago, been a very seamless launch, frankly, quite quiet, which is odd <laughs> for me. Um, but it's been, yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, the, the transition to LGD has been seamless is the, is the word that I use quite, quite frequently when I talk about how we've moved over. And it's been interesting to see um, how the products develop whilst we've been developing our website and, and what's, um, what's in the pipeline going forward. Awesome. That's great. And I'm just, just on, so you, you touched on a couple of challenges that you had with your previous website. Um, and I'm sure there were lots of objectives for the new website. What were the kind of the main objectives that you were trying to achieve with, with LGD? Yeah. So a lot of our, um, a lot of our issues were around, um, well, about particular barriers were related to accessibility and our, uh, um, content being inaccessible and certain elements of our website being, um, inaccessible. We had our GDS audit and that was, um, illuminating we'll say uh, to, to some of the issues that we we came across and that was a key thing for us that when we were procuring um, a new product and a, and a partner to work with that we we had that right at the center of our uh, our thinking that that we wanted to create a um, a user-friendly um, accessible website that improved the overall user experience and residents and stakeholders ability to access the information and services that we could give them alongside being able to access some of our self-service products and, and services that uh, we've been developing in the background as part of our digital transformation strategy. Um, and it's, it's been, you know, the way we look at this is our corporate website is now our core piece of being able to deliver other elements of our digital strategy. And we've um, we've seen from the product that we've launched and, and what's going to happen with um, other developments inside of LGD that it's going to continue to um, help support us on our digital transformation journey and, and producing a, an overall digital experience for all and for residents and stakeholders that we think will be uh, as good as any locally, definitely, perhaps regionally and even nationally. Amazing. And I think just to touch on what I've said there, one of the key benefits for local gov Drupal is that um, other councils are working on similar challenges and, and introducing features and um, resolutions that then get shared with all the other councils free of charge and ready for them to use. Um, let's hear a little bit from Layla and, and uh, Micah Anatek. So obviously, AMP has the view of what the challenges were from the website as the customer, but when you guys first got involved in the project, um, how did you guys find it? Um, so from my point of view, that one of the first things I do is always an audit and analytics with you. Um, I was also fortunate enough to go up to Redcar for a couple of days and spend some time doing stakeholder sessions, lots of kind of back-to-back -back chat and that sort of thing. Um, and my challenge and barriers were essentially the website wasn't fit for purpose. As Ant said, 
it wasn't accessible and that was from the kind of structure of the site the content and also the documents on the site as well and so there was a, there was kind of a big problem there to solve as well the templates were really restrictive which meant that kind of things were shoehorned into the wrong places in terms of the information architecture and things got kind of buried where perhaps they should be brought up to kind of support that user journey more um, search didn't work that was a big one I'll never forget uh, searching for schools and having it come I think it was page 20 something of the search results and it was 20 odd results on a page so there was kind of fundamental issues with the site there information was also out of date it was quite a big site with kind of things kind of hidden away so things easily got outdated and when I was speaking with the stakeholders what came through quite clearly was there's kind of this frustrations with the current situation but also a bit of we've heard all this before is it actually going to be different when you do this new website or is it going to be the, you know the same thing in a different coat essentially so there was a little bit of kind of you know kind of trying to bring people along on that journey and reassure them and listen to what they were trying to tell us were their problems um the other part of this was around what the users were saying as well so one of our key activities for example was a user survey and what you could see in that was that the users were saying the same problems they found it difficult to find information whether that was through navigating the site or through the search itself um and that, that kind of came up time and time again and you could see in the analytics as well these problems as well there was a high bound, a really high balance rate across the site and when you looked at the search kind of terms people were using things that they were searching for um Dunsdale tip is always the example i go back to over and over everyone was searching Dunsdale tip but on the website itself it was called the household waste and recycling center which there were no searches for so there was kind of this fundamental disconnect between what the users wanted and what was actually being on the current site so i think that was a really big challenge because it wasn't just a case of lift and shift there was a fundamental rethink there in terms of ia content accessibility and everything else that was on the site needed a complete overhaul but that also made the project for me really exciting because that's what drives your transformation when you take it straight back and think about what the users want and need um i'll hand over to ryan actually or, or mike to talk a bit more about the kind of logistical project yeah. things as well Absolutely. Thank you, Leila. I think one other challenge that, that was identified by, by us, and, and I do shadow everything that, that Leila said, is, is installing that confidence back into users and stakeholders as well. We know we're going to be speaking to them a lot throughout the project, and it's, it's about ensuring that all of the information we're gathering from them is actually going to be used to make real change. And one, one way that we actually tackled this was by ensuring that the users and stakeholders were then re-engaged again in the project using focus groups and things like that to make sure that they're engaged not only at the beginning of the project but throughout through user testing focus groups things like that to make sure that that confidence then is reinstalled that actually the information they are giving us is being taken seriously and hopefully we'll be able to then make some some real changes onto the website uh, another one um, slightly off piece from from the website itself but with this project would, would be distance from the customer um, but we tackled this very very easily obviously using teams and zoom and things like that to speak to everybody but um, as Layla said I think in total across the project we managed to spend just over three or four days with the customer in person lots of face-to-face -face meetings and ensuring that anyone we spoke to was constantly engaged and all of the details that, that we had were shared with them so they could always reach out to us we actually had a few users privately reach out to us via email sending us additional feedback um so it was really really good uh, to have that level of engagement but it was a barrier that we, that we did see uh upcoming but we managed to tackle it quite quickly by ensuring that communication was consistent through everybody that we spoke to on the project just to make sure that anything they were providing us was always given back to them at some point later in, in the project um i don't know mike did you want to jump in from from your side with any any challenges that you, you may have come across from the technical perspective of the, the delivery of the website um it wasn't as challenging as the the research part because that that identified the things that we needed to solve and once we had that shopping list of items we could make sure that the solution that we we were given by lgd as the base uh, matched against those requirements and any gaps we could then develop and move forward with uh, the benefit of using something like local gov drupal is that we do have the basis of requirements for almost uh, all 
councils and uh, what they would need. So the gaps weren't too large, which makes a project faster and easier to deliver. Then once we delivered the, the basic solution, we can iterate through that with the team uh, and they get tested as Layla and Ryan have both said, uh, and the solution is retested and tweaked and improved and we end up with the best possible uh, website that we were able to get. Amazing. Awesome. Um, and then so just to kind of touch on that process, the, the, the approach we kind of take with the LGD project is that um, we, we, we always start with user research at the very beginning, just to make sure that all of the requirements and the technical requirements are wrapped around the user. Um, and that's when um, Mark and Mike come into their element. So um, there's what about so Mark? There's, a, there's actually a question in um, in the chat from from Toby, and he's asked, "Can we briefly describe the process for publishing and maintaining content? So how that works in LGD in terms of is there a process in place to do scheduled publishing, approval, all that kind of stuff?" Uh, yes, there is. We, we're using the Drupal core workflows uh, suite, so you can set content as draft or published or archived or deleted and back to draft again. So if, if, if something has gone live and, and needs to change, uh, editors then set up their own kind of internal system of who, who, who is allowed to use each state. So an editor might be allowed to create content but not allowed to publish content. And an administrator might be allowed to create and publish and, and delete. And then a super admin can, can, do, can do everything. Uh, that works then with the Drupal role system. So depending on the account type you have, that allows you to set um, different diff different people to do different things. And we can we can do that across different content types too. So that that can be for a serve. You, you could have one uh, workflow system for um, services, but you might have a slightly different uh, work workflow system for news and news and and and, and events. Um, we've also got got things like alerts and alert banners built into the website. So you can put an alert that's global, goes on every single page of the website or contextualize that it only goes on certain sections of, of the website or site, or you might have an alert about uh, roads that only goes on, on the, the road service. And those those alerts themselves, even though they're not actually full pages, they've also got their own workflow system that, that they can be set to publish, unpublish, draft, archive, and, and, and other states. You can, you can set as many states as you want. We've, we've given four as, a, as our initial uh, um, defaults. Awesome, perfect. Hopefully that answers your, your question, Toby, but if it doesn't, do feel free to ask another one. Um, let's talk a little bit about the process. So uh, let me hand over to, to Leila or Ryan a little bit, just talk about what was involved in your, in your research at the early stages, and then we'll hear from um, Mike and Mark about what actually the development side looks like. And then we'll get back to Amp, who can share all of these um, success stories with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, later, I can, I can jump in straight away. Um, right. So the, the process is split into, into four key phases throughout the project. Obviously, the first one is, is a research discovery. And then after that, we then move into things such as alpha, beta, and then going into a final launch phase as well. There is quite a lot that we cover within the research discovery. Um, I think Leila's already mentioned a few of the items already. The first one is obviously a website audit. We do a full audit of the old site to see exactly where all of those key issues are. Um, directly after that, we dive into, into stakeholder interviews, workshops, where we actually get to speak to people who, who use the site constantly um, throughout their day-to-day -day lives. Um, Leila also mentioned a, a user research survey, um, so we try to branch out to as many users as possible to gather as much data as possible as well to then use that throughout the rest of the research phase. And we also go through things such as the analytics, we do um, a gap analysis, user testing with all of those users that I mentioned previously, trying to get them into focus groups and uh, to then work with them very, very closely to, our, to identify where are those key challenges, you know, where are they, where are they finding those big frustrations with the current site. Uh, and then we also do things uh, called uh, personas, we develop a, a large selection of personas um, and provide a, a detailed list of recommendations to, to, to red car or the, the customer at the time to then hopefully target them to what they need to do in alpha, beta and final launch with developments or content and things like that. Um, Leila, did you want to dive into a little bit more detail on some of those items in, in the discovery that you completed for this project? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think the key thing for us is ensuring that that voice of the end user is coming through all elements of what we're doing. And what we found is that by doing that, by ensuring that your new platform, new website reflects that voice and what the users want and need, you can really transform a website to become that kind of cornerstone for digital transformation. If you have that kind of, the way I always describe it to people, if you have that kind of strong core at the beginning, you can build on that, you can add the other services, you know, you can 
plug in your CRM and that sort of thing. But if that's not built with kind of strength in the middle, when you start to try and plug in those services for transformation, you know, trendy things or chat or whatever, it starts to kind of crumble. And that's when that's kind of the importance to me around user research, because when you can hear that user's voice and it supports the user to complete things kind of digitally first, it really becomes that kind of key part of the council, that core kind of center point for that change there. Um, in terms of the kind of research and development, things that we do, as well as kind of looking at the kind of current situation and building that wish list, what else is it the council want to do in the future? What is that? What does launch look like? But what does it look like six months from now, a year from now? This isn't about stopping. This is about launch and then what next for us very much so. And things like the personas, that's what we can use to build those things because there'll be a huge list list in there. You decide what you want to launch with and then you decide what's going to need further development, what's going to be phase two, phase three, phase four. So it's really important kind of core research to build your thinking and decision making on. Mike, shall I hand over to you and Mark now to talk a little bit more around the development processes? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think I, I started covering this earlier, really. Um, yeah. We have two threads in the development. The first thread would be features, uh, and the second thread is the, the look and feel. They do cross over quite a lot, obviously, because you can't have a feature unless you know what it's going to look like. But we tend to try and start with the overall look and feel of the site and the, the brand and adhering to brand guidelines and designs or any requirements that um, a council has or a client has. Um, in the case of Redcar, we, we played around with quite a, the logo quite a lot. Um, it's, it's a tricky logo, it's quite long. Um, but we, so iterating through that and making sure that we don't just um, settle for what looks all right, we've got to work through it, talk to people, inquire with as many stakeholders as possible to get the best solution. And the same then happens with the rest of the look and feel and also the features. Uh, so each of the features that we have, we would perform the same process, get a, an initial design, an initial um, working prototype, which can then be tested and checked and tweaked and improved. Anth, I don't know whether you want to add something about the process, how you <laughs> went through it and how you felt going through it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll start with um, with the things that Leila and Ryan have mentioned, that the, um, the that, that process was extremely positive for us as a communications team as well, because as, um, as, as Ryan and, and Leila mentioned, we did have a little bit of, well, a little bit, a lot of um, disengagement from um, services and service users as well about the site and it was just you know they didn't want more of the same they wanted to to know that they were going to get um, a better experience overall and it, it meant that we've been saying a lot of what um, Layla and Ryan particularly what Layla did with the user research and the personas and things um, we've been saying this for a little while and that a lot of our issues were based on the fact that we weren't um, working towards using these we were working more towards um, internal processes that that didn't really match up with what people were looking for so to have that backup of, of sort of solid um, user research that, that backs up our thinking and what, what we initially thought um, was our path forward was, was really useful for us because it meant that the level of engagement that we were then able to achieve with, um, with stakeholders and residents and, and other parties that, that contributed to the, to the project meant that we were much further along um, the content development process um, in a much, you know, much, much quicker fashion and uh, we got an overall better product as a result of that. From the in terms of like the design and the features and things, it, it's broadly again the same the same sort of um, of view as that it was it was really useful for us to to engage with um, with Mike and Justine and, and the rest of the team over at, um, at Anatech when we were and Layla as well when we were, we were working on the designs and bringing our graphic designer on board to to work together with um to to work together with Mike and, and Mike's team to try and um, adapt our our style because we, we know the style guide that we had is it predates both myself and our graphic designer so it was a bit of a an awkward situation to try and, and develop out something that didn't look very counselly um but was still matched up it still matched up what what we'd been doing with our our style and our brand in the in the years leading up to the development of the project um and then into the i mean into the features it makes it on the head there it was it was the iteration that that was most important there is we had a general idea 
of what we needed through the user research, but to be able to actually see those um, those features develop and improve over time um, was a was a really positive experience for us, and it, it really gave us the um, the, the launch product that we really hoped for when we when we started the process of deciding that we needed a, a new site. So it just it seemed to be a a, um, a relatively you know, sort of again, I'm going to say seamless again, but it was sort of a seamless process where everybody got, you know, got the right ideas and the the opportunity to discuss those ideas in a sort of a candid and, and sort of really honest um, honest forum, so that we could we could work through any snags that we found or any sort of differences in in view on the way we're putting content together or whether we're putting look and feel together or the way that we're putting um, features together. So yeah, just a, you know, it was the a really easy experience for us. Amazing. And in terms of um, um, let's let's talk about surprises that you that you kind of found along the way. Um, so we've made this sound like an amazing like the amazing project, and it wasn't a major project. And it went really well. Um, but tell us about any surprises that that you that, that came out of nowhere for you, and and we had to react to. I mean, I suppose it was the initial design phase was a bit of a a, um, a shock. I suppose is the is the best way of putting it. Is that you know the the team at Anatech and did did, did what anyone would do when you delivered a style guide they delivered something that actually isn't that far away stylistically from what we ended up with but in the old style and that was you know that was quite a, a shock to see this is what our style actually looks like in reality and that you know it was it was surprising how um sort of unwelcoming it made the whole the whole site and you could see straight away it was a case of that is not what we want our brand to be and it's not what, what we want our overall user experience to be um i mean outside of that the you know there's in terms of the, the overall development i mean there wasn't many other issues really outside of the look and feel maybe some small things with um making certain features work in in slightly different ways search being the the main one and having those conversations about search and just search do x y and z but nothing um that i would call out with the ordinary as a surprise, so you know it, it's good to get those things to appear and get them out of the way, but nothing that I um, I looked at and thought, oh no, the the hole in the floor has um has appeared and we're we're about to fall into it. So they they definitely those the things you mentioned definitely felt like the standard sort of iteration iterations that we would like to go through. Yeah, maybe yeah. So they they feel like normal to me, but maybe they feel <laughs> unusual to you from a client perspective. <laughs> Well, as I mentioned, when we when we first did this, uh, when we first our, our first sessions, is I'm I'm a little bit of a, a brutalist when it comes to design. So when when I see something and go, mm, maybe that isn't quite where we want to go, you know, it's a bit of a, a shock for me. So yeah, but as I say, nothing that um that that we were overly worried about. But it was it was quite a shock to see that our actual style guide probably wasn't up to what it needed to be. Um, and that's that sort of that that informs some work that we're doing internally as well now to bring our style up to uh, where we want it to be and sort of match up with what we've created with the, with the website and, and other bits and pieces that we're, we've done alongside that. And it usually takes a project like this, a digital project to make you rethink the style guidelines and, 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 and basically um, <coughs> spin them on the head and, and go again. Um, well, uh, there's another question in, in, in the chat, which we'll answer. And then we'll go back to Ant and just hear about the project successes and then we'll, um, we'll wrap up for Q and A. Um, so Mark, I think you're probably best place to answer this one. Um, yep. so, so you can see it on the right, so I'll let you answer. You presume I have the Q&A opener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I, can I do, do I do, I <laughs> do. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so it, again, it's from Toby. Um, do we think that this uh, LGD is confined to local government? There seems to be quite a bit of overlap with national and devolved government requirements and our GDS, that's the government de design uh, system, are, are they, they involved? Um, what, one of the things I was going to say there on just the last part about the design and, and the build was that when we, we rewrote the, the base team for local Gov Drupal itself, so all councils using local Gov Drupal will now use this new base team that we wrote last year, uh, that follows GDS principles. So all, all of the design patterns are following GDS in terms of how uh, accordions and tabs work, in terms of how menu systems work, in terms of um, uh, the, the hierarchy for heading levels and things like that. So out of the box, if you if you got, we'll say, no money at all, you just want to use local Gov Drupal, you can install that and just change the, the default color from, I think it's blue or purple, whatever it is, to your, your, your brand color. You, you'll have a GDS compliant website uh, for your council. Um, GDS themselves aren't involved, but we're, 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 using, we're using them as our kind of uh, 
they were battle tested. They've done all this research. They've 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 said that this works on a government website. So we're we're using them as our base as opposed to them being involved with us. Uh, I don't think we'd have any problem with them being involved with with, with us. Um, so it kind of it's not confined to local government. I mean, it's a free open source product. You can just download it and use it as, as you want. Um, I think there's a Coast Guard somewhere uh, using it. I think there's a fire service somewhere using it. Uh, I know there's 30 or 40 councils using it at the moment. Uh, it, it's basically a content management system, a CMS that, that has the, the basic things that every CMS wants. Every, every website we build, whether it's for, for, for financial institutions, whether it's for corporate bodies, whether it's, whether it's for councils, everyone seems to want a homepage, news, uh, events, uh, landing pages, all that kind of stuff. So we've all that built. And on top of that, then we've got some extra things built as well that, that, that might be more specific to councils, such as a service listing and a directory of uh, amenities and things like that in the area. Um, I, I think there's there's great overlap if you look at the uh, NHS trusts and the um, the feature set of the NHS trusts websites. They, they seem to be very, very closely aligned with what a local authority website would, would use. So I, I, I'd see no reason why, why that's... Um, why well, that's a mark we, we couldn't also uh, be be facilitating. And if you look at the NHS then design system, that's also actually built on top of the GDS design system. So I think with very little work, we could have NHS branded websites uh, based on local gov Drupal, based on GDS, <laughs> uh, quite, quite 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 easily. So yeah, there, there you go. It's, it's not it's 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 it says local gov Drupal, but it it's it it could have wider applications if someone wanted to wanted to use it in the wider world. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Okay, um, let's wrap up here then. Let's go back to Anne. Anne what we want to we want to hear about um, the results. So we 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 spoke with Gabe on this on this call, and we said how great things have been. But what have the results actually been like since launch? What's the feedback from stakeholders and users, and, and how are you measuring it? Yeah, so it's been. I mean, it's been quiet is the word that I use, which is for me that that equals a successful launch. Um, we've had very little um, feedback from um, the the services to say that they're unhappy with anything that's gone on. Um, a lot of things have been content changes initially from um, beta versions that we did and, and reopen and reworking some some content. Um, internally, it's been well almost universally positive in terms of the feedback that we've received. Um, everyone from our, our top table at EMT through to our, um, our frontline customer services colleagues who we we've um, engaged with sort of power users for the site because they you know they're our, our front door to um, to residents and they needed a better front door to information. They're all they're all commented very positively on um, on the experience that they've had with the new site. It's much easier to use. The search feature actually works and gives you the results that you expect when you search for certain terms. Who'd have thought that that would have been as important as it is? Um, but the overall internally has been universally positive. We've had very little negative feedback externally as well. We've had our usual sort of um, the, you know, people who liked the previous site, um, the you know, for, for whatever reason, some people like what they like, they don't like change and things like that. But we've not had anything directly from our, our residents or our elected members or other sort of key partners and stakeholders in the same manner that we did with our previous website website launch. Um, so broadly speaking, it's been, you know, if you're going to measure anything in terms of success, we, we were measuring it on the, the sort of the feedback that we were receiving or the lack thereof. And this has been a, you know, a complete success for us. And it, overall, our measurements for for success in the interim, or the, the shop, this this sort of initial launch period, um, are related to the sort of the feedback that we're receiving um, verbally or through our our content our contact channels about about the site and the specifics about the site. We've decided to focus on the areas that we knew the site really struggled last time around, which is quality of search, quality of content, quality of overall navigation, and those are the three main areas that we're we're keeping an eye on over this sort of this first month to six week of six weeks of launch. After that, we're going to start looking at um, things like bounce rate and the use of the use of search and the terms that are, are being used, um, and the overall feedback from our um, we've we've put together a, a feedback survey that that we're going to send out to our our view viewfinder panel on a quarterly basis to to see how their um, their experiences differing as we move forward and the site develops and matures and we add more content and deliver more services through the through the website. Um, but overall. It, it's definitely it's definitely been a success for us, and um, I think the the major thing for us is for us to go, to have gone from where we were to where we are in nine months, um, and and launch as smoothly as we as we did is the um, is the is the best the best measure of success. And 
you know, we've had a, a, an, an incredible experience with um, you guys over at, at Inviews and, and Mike and the team over at uh, Anatech to, to work together to create something that we think um, gives us a real solid core and foundation for us to continue on our, our digital transformation journey and, and start to really um, put our, our user needs and our user experience right at the core of everything that we do with our digital platforms. Amazing. And, and, and the great part of this is this is just the beginning, right? The project's now live. Um, yeah. But with a platform like LGD, it's consistent user testing that keeps we keep doing just to make sure that the, the, the website still meets the needs of your end users. Um, so that's awesome. Um, we're going to wrap up um, by asking each of our panelists just to summarize the project in three words. Um, not sure they've prepped for this one, so this could go anywhere. But um, <laughs> let's start with Ryan. Awesome. Um, so I think... I would definitely say engaging. It was very engaging throughout. We spoke to so many people and even, even when we spoke to, to all sorts of different end users and stakeholders throughout, there was always that level of engagement there. I'd also definitely say it was transparent. Um, any feedback we got from users was always was always shared with the wider team. There was nothing we kept to ourselves. We were always very, very transparent with, with Anth and his team, but also with, with Mike and the development team as well throughout this project. There was nothing hidden from anybody throughout. Uh, and lastly, I'd, I'd say enjoyable. Um, we always had a weekly catch up every Friday. It was usually last thing on a Friday. Some people think that's a good thing. Some people think that's a bad thing, but it was, it was definitely our favorite call of, of the week. So, um, it was really, really good. It gave us a chance to, to catch up with everybody before the week ended. And, um, yeah, it was just enjoyable throughout the, the nine months. That would be my three. Awesome. Uh, Mark. I'm, I'm going to go just for one because Ryan's taken some of the ones I was going to use. <laughs> but the, the word I'm going to use is, is empowering. I think one of the great things about local gov Drupal, and I, I want to speak about local gov Drupal, not, not necessarily the Red Current Cleveland project, is that it empowers any council to have a website as good as any other council. So if, if you look at, um, uh, say, uh, Westminster Council, or you look at Essex County Council, they got budgets way, way bigger than Red Current Cleveland. Uh, but the user needs in Essex, someone wants to find out when are my bins going to be collected? Is the exact same as somebody in Downing Street wondering when are my bins going to be collected, you know, <laughs> uh, or, or somebody up, up, up in, in, in red car. So, so you, using this system, and, and I'm, I'm deliberately using those as examples because Westminster is also built on, uh, on, on local Gov Drupal and Essex County Council is moving to local Gov Drupal as well. Uh, but so so to, to say that that red car can have the exact same website platform underlying it and then brand it exactly like they want to brand it, I think that's, that, that's really em em empowering for, uh, for councils. Yeah, and that's, and that's the power of open source and, and yep. getting people working together to solve the same challenges in one place rather than, than siloed. Um, Layla. I'm going to take it one step further than enjoyable, Ryan. I'm going to go fun. I really enjoyed this project. I liked working with everyone. So, I mean, obviously, we've got some representatives from the team here. There's a much wider team involved here from Redcar, Manatech from our side as well. It's great to work with everyone. It's enjoyable. We bounce ideas off each other. It didn't ever feel like, like Ryan said, a drag ever to talk to anyone. You know, it was always positive, always fun. Um, possibly cheating here, so I'm going to put a hyphen in the middle. User-centered, I think, as well. It's fantastic. It's great to see more and more councils moving to understanding that you need to do that user research first. You need to understand what's going on, understand those needs, and then use that to build kind of so I think that would be something that one of those key words for me is that user-centered piece. And finally, satisfying, because not only did they do the research, we then, knew, we then took that research all the way through the project. And what we have at the end is a user-centered site that delivers for the council as well. So an incredibly satisfying project too. Amazing. And, and the research that's gathered at the beginning is also benchmarks. So then we'll, we'll, we'll compare that to the research that we do again in six months time. So always useful. Mike. Great, right, thank you. Uh, there, there are probably some repeats in here, and uh, if Ant's gonna, Ant is going to go last, he's going to get literally <laughs> nothing on his bingo card. Um, so it was an open project. So open is, is the key thing there with the discussion that everyone said here already. Uh, views were aired, everyone discussed it, everyone was equal. So maybe equal is better. Smooth, it went very smoothly. There are some projects that don't. This one did. And I think that's probably to do with a lot of the other things that people have raised. <clears throat> and it was wonderfully collaborative. It was um, not only the, the open side where everyone was, was heard, but 
we worked together. It wasn't like everyone went off to a silo and then came back and was heard. We worked together in order to, to solve the problems. And so, oh. Yeah, over to Amph. Amph, I'm gonna, gonna ask you for three, three words, but I'm also gonna ask you if there's councils that are considering moving to LGD at the moment, what's one piece of advice you would give them? So I'm gonna mix it up because I know probably everyone's taking your words. So. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think for, if you're thinking about it, I think the it's the it's sort of the group ethos, and and Mark touched on it that um, the thing that we discovered quite early on when we went to the product meetings was that this is a group of of organisations that broadly speaking all have the same issues and are all trying to resolve the same issues, and it's at that level of collaboration between organisations that that really impressed us and how um, how candid and open. The, the group are with one another with what they've done, what's available, how they're going to further improve the, the core product that's there. And if you're thinking about it, get yourself into one of the product meetings, get yourself into the Slack. Everybody is extremely welcoming, um, you know, and very communicative as well. And, and the, if you, is there any part of the project that you're unsure about or whether it's applicable to your organization, there's always somebody who's able to, to give you a very clear answer to, to your question. And I'd say, Ultimately, it's a it's a product that you can pick up and deliver a GDS compliant, good looking, user friendly website in relatively short order. And from our side as content managers, it's a relative well, it's a very easy product to, to use as well. So it's um, it's just an overall again, I've used seamless numerous times today, but it's a, it's a it's a seamless product to use. And if you're thinking about it. Have a chat with any of the guys in the um, or any of the teams in the in the group already, and you'll soon see why um, more and more councils are becoming part of the project and picking up the product. Um, and if you know, I'm open if anyone wants to speak to me about it. I'll speak and speak and speak on it and evangelise it until I fall over. So it's just a case of it's there to to be looked at, and you can see everything that that's about it, and get some full explanations from people who were actually in the trenches as it were, developing it and, and redeveloping it. So take a look, it's very much worth your, worth your time to, to have a look at what's available. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Um, we're going to start calling you Seamless now. Um, <laughs> so so I think we've, we've kind of, uh, you've probably heard enough from us now and, and all the panelists. So uh, we'll hand back over to, to you, Lucy, and we'll see if there's any questions. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, Leila, Ryan, and Mike, Mark and Jamie for that insightful presentation. It's been really interesting to hear about the project and hear some of your learnings. So. Thank you. So we do now have a little bit of time for some questions. There are a couple that have been sent through, but as I mentioned, if you do have a question, please send that through now on the Q&A tab. Otherwise, you will have an opportunity to carry on the conversation later at week.digileaders.com. <coughs> Sorry. So I've got a question here to start off with. What are the three main benefits of LGD? Want to take that uh, probably, probably one for amp. amp yeah i touched on pretty much all of the um, reasons why <laughs> i think you should go in um in my, in my wrap up but obviously i think it's the um the the time that you save um the fact that you get a gds compliant um website pretty much out of the box and the the really open community um, of developers and, and um, content designers and, and people who are involved in Putting the um, putting the system together and developing the system that would be uh, the, the main benefits for particularly for myself and, and Red Can't Cleveland as an organisation, but definitely for anyone looking into developing a new site. Okay, great, thank you. And um, so another quite a simple one: what? How many counts, councils are involved with LGD? Uh, there's currently, I think, about twenty-five councils. I think there's four or five counts that are involved that aren't listed officially for, for whatever reason, if they've decided not, not, not to put their, their logos on, on the website. So if, if you go to localgovdrupal.org and click on the four councils uh, um, tab, you, you can see all the councils that, that, that are involved there. I think it's about 25 at the moment. Uh, we've, we've just started working with our first council here in Ireland as well. Um, so in, within Anatech, we've built five or six or seven council websites, but this, this is our first one, Tipperary County Council, uh, that's actually using local Gov Drupal. Great. Awesome. And have you had any feedback from your residents or have you seen a rise of self-serving? 
so we are two and a half weeks into the um in, into the site being launched um but we've already noticed our, our customer services colleagues have already said that they they've had comments from residents that have called them for whatever reason to say that the um it's a lot easier to access the um the digital services that we currently have already and we've made use of um the task buttons that are part of the um, the service page content types within local gov drupal to to facilitate that and make that much easier previously it was links inside of page text and it, you know things could get lost but um you, we made that much easier for residents and made that much more prominent on pages so that the you know, when, when we start to really push towards digital first and digital self services our were our primary method of um of communication and contact with with residents we think that will we'll really go forward and the main feedback that we've had is that the site's just easier overall in, in all elements the the content quality has, in, has improved so it's easier to find the or easier to to access the information that you're after um the search function works brilliantly and the, the overall navigation um is, is made much more um in a much more common sense manner so people naturally navigate to areas where they think they're finding information and we're not getting as much but well, virtually no feedback to say that content is in um, quote unquote the wrong place um so that that's been the the main bits of feedback that we've had okay, great feedback um and what was the biggest finding from the discovery and user research oh i think that's probably for me isn't it <laughs> that one um i think what came out really clearly for me was that there was a need to completely refocus to start again and to really put that user at the center of the website so this was from everything from the information architecture so that Redcast site has a completely new information architecture based on what users think and how they think those journeys should do rather than how it's structured within the council content rewriting accessibility all of that sort of thing so really refocusing that kind of focus of the website back to being on those users and hearing that end user voice throughout that site. I think that was what came out most clearly. This wasn't a lift and shift job. This was a complete transformation. Okay, brilliant. And, and a question from Gary, was cost saving a factor in going with LGD? Question for Anne. Um, no, is the, is the answer. Um, Leila hit it on the head is we, we have a digital transformation project that, um, that, that we're, we're embarking on now and we, we our cyber attack in, in early 2020 kind of cemented this that we we needed to completely refocus our attention on our digital strategy um, and how we can better approach the ways that residents access our information and access our services because you know when you when it's all gone you suddenly see that there is a big hole there that needs to be um needs to be rebuilt and needs to be more resilient needs to be better overall for, for us as, as officers of the authority and for, for residents trying to access information and services um ultimately we were where we were looking for the best product that met our needs and met our ongoing um, transformation needs, and this is the this just happened to be the one that 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 we um, we landed upon. So, no is the easy answer, but there is some caveats to that, and it's much more related to we wanted to have the best possible product to enable us to go through our digital transformation as smoothly as possible. Brilliant, great, thanks, Ant. Sorry, getting a lot of questions at the moment. Uh, and then a final question, what was the buy-in like from the rest of the team in terms of change? I don't know who's, who wants to take that? I mean, I, I can start on that one from, from our CBC <laughs> side is that, um, I mean, Leila's mentioned it, is that we had a lot of, um, not resistance, but a lot of internal, um, internal colleagues who um, wanted things to be in a certain way that suited them as, as officers and their team so that they could find the information that they needed in terms of, uh, the, the biggest one is the Dunsdale tip versus the household waste, waste recycling center conversations that we had um, and using the user research and getting the information from Layla to, to enact those changes in the way that we used our language to make it much more user focused was one of the biggest challenges that we had in terms of changing and trying to explain to officers and, and various services that the goal of the website is to deliver information for residents and access to services for residents so it should be built designed and written in a manner that suits them and that's a, that that's an enormous change for us um our previous website and the, the one even before that was very very um corporate focused and and allowing services to have all their information on on the site as opposed to delivering the best quality and the most usable and the most useful information for residents that, that was the um the biggest change we've seen and the, the level of buy-in that 
that we got from services once we went to our alpha phase to show them that if you listen to the, the user research that you get an overall you're getting a better product in terms of what you're getting in look and feel but also the quality of the content which we obviously extrapolate up to if you have better quality content you're going to reduce the need to have um person to person interactions with with residents unless absolutely necessary and that's one of the the parts of our digital strategy and our digital transformation goals to um reduce the need for people to speak to officers directly not because we don't want them to but because we've developed content in a manner that is um, is high enough quality and is useful enough for them to be able to get on and do what they need to do without having to get it explained great brilliant does anybody else have anything they want to add to that? No? Great. Okay. Well, I think we are unfortunately out of time. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And thank you so much to Layla, Ryan, and Mike, Mark, and Jamie for such an interesting and informative session. The recording of this will be on week.digileaders.com on the same talk page that you registered on and you'll also be emailed a link to the recording later on today, and you'll be able to share that link with colleagues and watch it back at your leisure. Getting some nice comments in the chat. Thanks to you all from Toby. Um, so thank you all so much again, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Wonderful. Cheers, Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.